Madam President, there is a beautiful small town in the farthest corner of northwest Montana. The town is called Libby, and it sets in the heart of the Kootenai Valley. Surrounded by majestic snow-capped mountains, it's a beautiful place. But despite Libby's postcard-worthy views, the town has a troubled history. Starting in 1919, mining companies began pulling vermiculite from the mountains outside of town. Vermiculite was used to bake, uh, to build soil in gardens, to insulate buildings. And it wasn't long before the families of Libby began to pay the price for keeping their fellow Americans warm. Mining vermiculite exposed Libby's miners and residents to asbestos dust. That asbestos got into their homes, their schools, and eventually their lungs. And over the decades, hundreds of folks in Libby died from asbestos exposure and thousands more continue to suffer today. When the W.R. Grace Company bought the mines in 1963, the company denied that asbestos caused the illnesses plaguing the town's residents. Instead of sounding the alarm, they kept quiet while building corporate profits on the backs of Libby's suffering families and workers. Word about Libby's fate finally made it to national news in 1999. The plight of Libby's families caught the attention of one man in particular. Montana senior senator, U.S. Senator Max Box. Max soon began his crusade to get the EPA and the Department of Health and Human Services to take action. Despite Max bringing countless government officials to the Northwest Montana to see what asbestos had done to the men, women, and children of Libby, it took 10 years for the government to declare this region a public health emergency, the first of its kind. Thanks to Max, Libby today is home of the state-of-the-art medical clinic that screens and treats residents for asbestosis. Thanks to Max, the Affordable Health Care Act extended Medicare coverage to everyone in the emergency zone. And thanks to Max, funds are flowing into Libby to remove asbestos from homes, schools, and playgrounds. Due to Max's hard work and the determination of the people of Libby, the town is slowly putting the sordid legacy of W.R. Grace in its rearview mirror. Max's hard work for the people of Libby is the Max Bacchus that Montanans have come to know. But Max's work for the people of Montana started many years before he led the fight to help the folks in Libby. In the early 1970s, when Max started in public service, he traveled to Butte to meet a fellow by the name of Harp Cody. Harp knew the lay of the land in Butte, but he didn't know Max, and Max didn't know Butte. Harp was instantly impressed with Max's willingness to work, or as Harp says it, Max's fire in the belly. Max asked Harp to introduce him to Butte's leaders and voters, and unlike other candidates, Max didn't want Harp to lobby the folks at Butte on his behalf. Instead, Max went door to door himself to win their support. That kind of work ethic, where you put your own shoe leather into the fight, is the reason Max has many achievements in Congress. Achievements that include saving Social Security from privatization, leading the charge to modernize the Clean Air Act, <coughs> passing six farm bills and three highway bills to strengthen Montana's and America's economy. Now, folks in Washington don't always recognize Max's hard work. And in a town where too many people race for the nearest TV camera, Max's, Max's preference for hard work doesn't always do him any favors. And that's practically a mortal, mortal sin around here, but not for Max. Max has represented Montana in Congress since 1975. His long record of service proves that Montanans don't want a showman. They don't want someone who yells across the aisle. They want someone who will reach across that aisle and find a way to say yes, even when saying no is the easier thing to do. Just like the folks in Libby, Montanans want someone who will work hard for them who will get results and fight to improve our quality of life. Montanans found a soulmate in Max Bacchus. I first met Max in 1998 at an economic development meeting in Haver, Montana. Max is famous for his economic development summits in Butte, so it was no surprise that we first crossed paths when Max was working to improve Montana's economy. At that point in his career, Max's record was already impressive. In 1972, as director of Montana's Constitutional Convention, Max helped, Max helped pass 
one of the most progressive state constitutions to date, enshrining protections for clean air, for clean water, and the right to a quality education into law. He then walked the entire length of our state to introduce himself to Montanans and win a seat in Congress, meeting more men and women along the way like Harp Cody. As Max gained experience in the Senate, he became chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee. Soon thereafter, well into his 50s, Max hiked 820 miles from one corner of our state to the other to earn the support of Montanans during his 1996 re-election. Now, Max, in your new role as ambassador, take my advice. Don't try walking from one end of China to the other. Max next rose to become chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. As chairman, Max didn't have the luxury of not getting the job done. Now, the Finance Committee has been home to some of our nation's hardest working senators and greatest examples of bipartisanship. Because failing to support critical programs like Social Security and Medicare is simply not an option. On the Finance Committee, you can't sit back and throw stones. You have to roll up your sleeves, you have to find common ground, and you have to get the job done. And that's what Max did. He passed legislation to reduce Americans' tax burdens, improve children's health, and most recently, to reform our nation's broken health care system. Max's penchant for hard work and thoughtful, independent-minded leadership stems from another great Montanan that he and I both admire, former Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield. Max met Mike as a teenager, and for many Montanans of today, myself included, Max connects us to Mike's legacy as a champion for the greater good, as a champion for putting service and sacrifice well before self, and as a champion for Montana. Montana's leaders always put Montana first, and Max is no exception. Just like Montana has shaped Max, Max has shaped Montana. Max's dedication to our public lands is legendary. Montana is known as a treasure state because of our incredible natural resources and unrivaled public spaces. From Yellowstone to Glacier, Montana is a place like no other. And throughout his career, Max has set out to preserve our treasured lands for future generations to enjoy. <coughs> In 2008, the same year he won re-election and became the first person to win all 56 counties in Montana, Max helped set aside 320,000 acres of prime hunting and fishing lands across our state. This land, which will forever be open to the public, is part of Max's brainchild called the Montana Legacy Project. Max's love of our outdoors extends to those who share his love, and in March of 2000, he came to the Senate floor to remember a young Montanan, Sean Michael Miles, who had tragically died in a car accident just over a year before. And he dedicated scholarship in Sean's name, and Max repeated Sean's words. I know this land may pay a price for being beautiful as change advances, carrying with it the prospect of loss. It is a land I desperately love. It is a part of me. It hurts so much to care so much. Yet, as a Westerner, I am invited to breathe it all in deeply each day. Max, Sean would be proud of your hard work to preserve our treasured places, and I pledge to carry on your efforts so Montanans can continue to cherish our special places and pass our traditions down to our kids and our grandkids. But it is not a stretch to say that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Max Bacchus. Max has brought world leaders to Butte for his Economic Development Summit. He brought camera crews onto construction sites and small businesses as part of his famous Montana work days. He operated forklifts and warehouses, made bread in Montana's bakeries and dug ditches, all to get a better feel for what hardworking Montanans do each and every day. And he fought for Montana farmers and ranchers who feed our nation. But he also helped bring a dry land farmer from Big Sandy, Montana, to the United States Senate. Max, I cannot tell you how much you've meant to me as a friend, as a partner, as a mentor. I've lost track of how many meetings and rallies that we've attended together across our state. But I do know that each one, you've had my back. So when I arrived in the Senate in 2007, it was because of you, that a guy with seven fingers and a flat-top haircut 
quickly figured out how to get from his office to the Senate floor. It's because of you that I had a model for working across the aisle to pass thoughtful, responsible legislation. And because of you, I always know that I have a friend to turn to when I need advice. That's because, along with your tremendous staff, you've always put Montana first. And you've built the Montana Democratic Party into a beacon of common sense, freedom, and opportunity in the West. Our party is stronger because of you and your dedication to our state. After retiring from the Senate in 1976, Mike Mansfield became the ambassador to Japan. And now, you are poised to continue following in Senator Mansfield's footsteps as ambassador to China. I know that you will continue to serve Montana even as you serve our nation's interests overseas. I wish you the best. And while you're gone, I'll keep up your fight for Montanans, particularly the Montanans who need someone to fight for them. Montanans like Les Scramstead. Les was a longtime Libby resident. For years, he saw politicians come to Libby with a promise to help. But that help never arrived. When Max came to Libby, Les told him he'd be watching. Les passed away in 2007, but before Libby began getting its help. But Max keeps Les's photo close. Because in Montana, a promise to help is a promise to keep. That's the Montana way. That's the Max Baucus way. Max, it has been an honor to serve with you. It's an honor to call you my friend. And the Senate will be a lesser body without you. I wish you Godspeed and good luck. This is an incredibly important job, and I know you're more than up to that task. Thank you for your service to this Senate and to Montana and to this country. With that, I'll yield the floor.